Hi, it's Alex from You Should Craft, and today we'll learn how to make these cabled dishcloths. Um, so you will need yarn and a hook. Um, for the pink one, I used Lion Brand Reup cotton yarn um, and an H5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, and then for this blue one, I used the Lily Sugar and Cream cotton yarn and an I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, so once you have your yarn and your hook, you'll also need scissors and tapestry needles in order to weave in your ends. Cool, so let's get started. So you will make your slip knot. And for our starting chain, we will chain 30 chains. All right, so once you have your 30 chains, you should probably double check to just make sure that you've counted correctly because um, the number is important for the pattern we're gonna use. Sweet, so we have 30 chains. Um, so we are going to crochet a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, we'll be putting our, whoops, we'll be putting our half double crochet right here. Um, and we're going to do the back loops only, but just for this first row. So to do a half double crochet, you'll yarn over, put your hook into the loop, yarn over again, Pull the first loop through, yarn over, and then now you're going to pull all three of those loops through. So right now we've got our starting chain, which is going to count as a half double crochet, but only for this row. And then we have our first half double crochet. So you'll half double or HDC across for a total of 29 half double crochets. I'll show you one more time. We'll yarn over, put our hook in. Remember for this row we're doing back loops only um, because we'll crochet the border using that other loop. Um, so put your hook in, yarn over again, pull through, now you have three loops, you'll yarn over again, and you'll pull all three of those loops through. So go ahead and finish crocheting your 29 half double crochets, and remember that we're counting the starting chain as a half double crochet, so there'll really be one starting chain and 28 half double crochets for this row but go ahead and pause the video to finish your first row. So once you have your 29 half double crochets, make sure that you double count to check that you have the right amount. Um, having an odd number is really important for the pattern that we're gonna use. And once we get to row three, you'll start to see why we need an odd number. Um, but so when you're done, you will chain one and you'll turn your work or flip it over. And now we're gonna crochet a row of single crochets. So these are very similar to a half double crochet, except that you are not yarning over to start with. So you are putting your hook in both loops this time. We'll use both loops for the rest of our project. Um, so put in your yarn, yarn over, pull that first loop through, yarn over again, and pull both loops through. And there's your single crochet. So put it through both loops, yarn over, pull the first loop through, yarn over again, and pull through those last two. So you are going to single crochet all the way across, which will give you 29 single crochets. And your last single crochet will need to be in the top loop of that starting chain, that chain two that we started with. So go ahead and pause the video and finish round two. Remember, we're single crocheting across for 29.
So I have crocheted 28 single crochets and I'm down to my 29th, which will be a little bit weird because you're crocheting into that starting chain. Um, but just like before, you'll put it through both loops and this will be a little bit harder because there's not really a stitch below it. Um, but so put it through both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull both those loops through. So now I have 29 single crochets. So I finished round two. Um, I will chain one and turn my work. So this next row is where we're really going to start to see that cabling pattern. Um, so we'll be making our first row where we start to see the texture coming through. So you'll start with just a half double crochet in that first stitch. And then we're going to do what's called a front post double crochet. Um, but we're going to do the front post double crochet into the stitches, those half double crochets from round one. So we're skipping over round two. Um, so to do a front post double crochet, um, it's really similar to just a normal double crochet. So you'll start with a yarn over and then we're finding that half double crochet from round one. So again, we're not using the single crochets from round two, just this half double crochet. So you will put your yarn or sorry, you'll put your hook behind that half double crochet. And this will count as your first loop in your front post double crochet. So yarn over and pull through. So now that half double crochet is off of your hook. Now you have three loops left. Um, you will yarn over, pull two loops through. Now you have two left. So yarn over, pull two loops through. And that is your first front post double crochet. Um, and so you can see that it's starting to kind of like, it's above all of the other stitches. So this will be more defined as you crochet more rows, but this, that's how we're gonna do our cables. And so when you do a front post double crochet, we're kind of skipping that stitch where we normally would have put it. So there's going to be nothing in our second stitch. So we had our half double crochet and then our front post double crochet. So we're kind of skipping this B and then we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. Then we'll do another front post double crochet. So again, we're going behind the half double crochet from round one or row one. We are yarning over, pulling through, yarn over, pull two loops through, yarn over and pull those last two loops through. So now we have our second front post double crochet and we're gonna do a half double crochet next to it. But remember, there's nothing going in this stitch because that was our front post double crochet. So we'll leave this one blank and we'll put a half double crochet here. And so you will continue this pattern across where you're doing a half double crochet and then a front post double crochet, half double crochet, front post double crochet, half, do half double crochet, and then another front post double crochet. And you will just do this across until you reach the end where you'll end with one extra half double crochet. And that's why we had that odd number of stitches. But so go ahead and pause so that you can finish up this row. And this is row number three. So I just finished my last front post double crochet in round three. So now I just have one stitch left, which is that final half double crochet. 
So I have 29 stitches alternating between those half doubles and those front post double crochets. So now I will chain one and turn my work. And this will be a single crochet row. So you'll single crochet across for 29 single crochets. Um, and it, if you're wondering why we need this row of single crochets between our post stitches, um, that's because if we didn't have it, there would be a lot of holes in our fabric, um, which is sometimes cool. But for like a washcloth or a dishcloth, you really want something that's more solid. So by adding this row of single crochets between our front post double crochets, um, we get like a more solid weave. So continue to single crochet across and you basically will just repeat rows two, which was all single crochets and row three, which is that pattern of the half double front post double crochets. So you'll repeat that until you have 31 rows in your project. So that won't give you your border yet, um, but it will give you the whole middle part of this washcloth. So you should really be able to see the cables coming in as you're doing this. Um, and then once you get up to row 31, we'll be pretty much ready to start our border. So go ahead and pause the video and kind of catch up so that you can get all of your rows done. So I have finished all 32 rows, or sorry, 31 rows of my washcloth, and now I'm ready for row 32. Um, so you'll have your very first row, uh, which was those half double crochets, and then you should have 15 repeats alternating between those rows of single crochets and the half double crochet, front post double crochet pattern. Um, a super easy way to count those rows is to count how many post stitches you have because each one represents two rows. Um, so one of them is that single crochet row and then one of them is the actual row with the half doubles and the front post stitches. Um, so you can just kind of count by twos, like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So that's 15 repeats of it. So you have 30 of that pattern and then the one of those half double crochets. So we are gonna finish by doing one more row of half double crochets, um, just so we're starting and ending with the same thing. So you'll chain one and turn. Oh, also, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I ran out of this lighter color of yarn. So now I have a two-tone washcloth, but I'm like kind of loving it. So I just <laughs> going with it. Um, but so we are crocheting our half double crochets across this row. Um, and so there'll be 29 of them. So you can go ahead and pause the video and just finish up this row with your 29 half double crochets. So I'm just crocheting my very last half double crochet in row 32. And now I am ready to start my border. Um, so I'm gonna chain one and turn and this border is going to be all single crochets. Um, if you have a different border in mind, you could absolutely just, you know, stop the video, finish up whatever border you want. It's just going to go around one round, all four sides. Um, but if you are interested in doing the single crochet border, like what I use, then you can just follow along to see how we do it. Um, so the first one is basically, it, it pretty much just looks like it's row 33. So we are crocheting single crochets, um, just all the way across this 
top. We're just going straight across like normal, like if this was just a regular row. And I also think I'm going to run out of this <laughs> color of yarn too. Um, I'm trying to like do some scrap busting with these projects and just <laughs> really misjudged how big the ball that I had left was. Um, but the cool thing about washcloth patterns like this is that they're super flexible. Um, so you can make them striped or different colors. You can do color blocks. You can do it all one color. Um, you can do the center one color and then have a border a different color. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, but so again, I'm just doing 29 single crochets right across the top. And once I get to the corner, I'm just going to add some extra stitches. Um, and that will really just kind of like round out the corner. Um, I guess not really round out, but it'll help you go around the corner because you'll have more stitches. And it'll help it be a little bit more like shaped. Um, so it looks like a real corner instead of just kind of like a little. I don't know. Blob. <laughs> so I'm crocheting my last single crochet in the top. Um, and before I go down the side, I'm just going to put two more single crochets in that last stitch. So uh, you're going to do three in every corner. Um, and then now you're just going to start crocheting down this side. So um, crocheting down the side of work is a little bit weird. Um, you're going to put one single crochet in each row, um, which will give you 33, or sorry, 32 down this like main portion of the side. Um, and where you put it is kind of up to you because you're basically just jamming it in the side of your stitches. So... Some of your single crochets on the side will be in some of those chain one stitches that you started each round with. And some of them will just be like literally in the middle of a single crochet or a half double crochet. And again, that doesn't really matter as long as it's fairly even. And honestly, it doesn't even really matter if you have exactly 32 going down this side. Um, as long as your spaces are pretty even. And you, you don't want like way less or way more. Oops, that one looks kind of weird. You don't want way less or way more than 32. You know, if you had like 50, um, it would start to kind of bunch up on the sides and get ruffly. But if you ended with like 30 or like 35, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but so just keep crocheting down the side. Remember, we are going to crochet um, about 32 stitches. We're going for one single crochet per row. Uh, but again, if it's a little bit more or a little bit less, it's not a big deal. But so go ahead and pause the video and finish that up. I need to switch my yarn color again. So I have switched colors and crocheted approximately 32 single crochets down the side. Um, so now I'm to my last one going in this corner. Um, and if you still have your little end tail from when you started, I usually just try to like weave that in a little bit here, or you could just totally save it for the end and weave it in. So like on the top, we are putting three single crochets in this last corner. Um, and that helps us to turn the corner so that we can go down this other side. Or I guess this is the bottom. Um, so now the reason that we crocheted in the back loops only when we first started our project is because it'll make, a, make it way easier to crochet our border. So 
we are still single crocheting. Um, you're going to have about 29 across because that's how many stitches we started with. And you're going to kind of go between these X's. And so those represent where we're putting our stitches. Um, if you don't crochet in the back loops only at the beginning of a project, um, these starting chain stitches can get really tight and like hard to put your hook into. Um, but crocheting in the back loops only at the beginning helps you to like, I don't know, it just makes the chain a little bit more loose so that it's really easy to do something like a border. Um, if we weren't putting a border on it, it like really wouldn't matter what we did at the beginning. But since we are, we did that. Okay, so the rest of the border is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you will continue to single crochet um, all the way across the bottom, and then you'll put three single crochets in the corner here. And then you'll crochet all the way back up the side um, with, you know, approximately 32 single crochets. And then in this top corner, you've already crocheted your first single crochet from when we did the top row. So you'll just put two more in this corner. Um, so if you want to go ahead and pause the video, uh, you can finish up crocheting your border. And then I'll show you how to do an invisible join to finish off your project. All right, so I just crocheted. Um, I finished the bottom and then I put three single crochets in the corner. Then I crocheted all the way up. And when I got to this corner, I put those two last single crochets um, since I already had one from that first round. And now I'm going to crochet an invisible join. So you'll begin by trimming your yarn. And then you'll use your hook to pull your yarn all the way through and join your tapestry needle. And then you want to basically make this look like it's the top of a stitch so it's just in this row. Um, so here you have a V in this, that's the top of the stitch that's right next to it. What you want to do is kind of circle around that. So you're going to put your needle through both loops on the stitch after the stitch next to it and pull it through. And then you want to put your needle into the top of the stitch that you finished with. Um, so for mine, it's actually really easy to tell because I had this yarn issue, <laughs> issue where I ran out of yarn in the middle. So I have two different colors. So hopefully you can see that, but you're putting your hook in the middle of that like hole that you started with. And then you're pulling it down. Um, and you want to pull it tight, but not too tight. Like you want it to be secure, but you also want it to be the same tension as these other types of stitches. Um, so if you like yank it, this one will be really teeny and all of these other ones will be normal and it'll look kind of weird. So you you want it to be the, approximately the same size as these other ones. So now it just looks like they're all just tops of stitches. Um, so then you will just weave in your ends like you normally would. Uh, mine's a little bit weird since I have these two colors. So I kind of have to stay in this like lighter pink section for my weaving. Um, otherwise it'll be more obvious and you'll be able to like see my light pink yarn through it. Um, but so just weave this back and forth a couple times. Oop. Pulled my needle out. And then when you're satisfied with your joining, um, you can just trim your yarn and that's it. So my um, 
dishcloth. I need to weave in these ends a little bit better from where I changed colors. Um, I found that with the cable pattern, these were like a little bit wigglier than what it would normally be. So if you are making this to sell, um, then I would definitely block your work. But if you're just making it to like get really wet and use as a dishcloth at your house, uh, then this will probably fix itself. But that's it. So we have crocheted this cabled dishcloth. Um, we used the single crochets, half double crochets. You learned about these post stitches. And then we just did a simple single crochet border. Um, the cool thing about this is that you can use any color of cotton yarn. Um, I used worsted weight. Some of them are lily sugar and cream like these two. And then I also crocheted this hot pink one using um, an H five millimeter crochet hook and Lion Brand Re-Up yarn, which is like a recycled cotton blend. Um, so any kind of like cotton yarn is cool for this project. Just make sure you use the hook that goes with it. Uh, but that's it. So thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this cabled washcloth. Um, if you're looking for the photo tutorial, you can find it on the Yusha Craft blog. Um, and you can also find a bunch of other free patterns and tutorials over there too. So please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Um, and check back again later for more crochet patterns and tools and stuff. So have an awesome day. Thank you.